All right. Welcome, everybody, to our team call. First team call of June. Yes, it is already June. Craziness. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just kind of jump right into it. Um, the topic for tonight, if you saw the graphic or saw Kathy's post about the save the date stuff um, coming up, is basically the number one thing that is affecting your business right now. And if you were at convention, you may already kind of have an idea as to what we're gonna talk about because we heard it a few different times. But um, for everybody, if you weren't, especially if you weren't at convention, I want everybody really quickly to um, just hover over the little chat screen and in the bottom, I want you guys to type out what the number one thing that is holding back your business right now. What do you think it is? Me? What does me mean, Beth? I'm going to need some more specifics on that. That's the most generic response ever, but okay. What specifically about you is holding yourself back? Yes. Maybe that's a different way. Your belief. Okay. And excuses. Hey, you need to pick one. Just kidding. All right. So we have following up with potentials. We have belief and excuses. If people not responding to the messages, sending. Can hear you okay. I said, I, is it just her? I guess they're I all responding, know. so they must really hear you. Sharon has to get out of her own head and not let what others think about it affect her. Time management. Time management and establishing priorities for Kathy as well. Okay. Anybody else? Being homeless. You're not homeless. You just don't have your preferred method of, what do you want to call it? Residency currently. Becky, the question is what's, what, what, what do you think is the number one thing that's holding back your business? Not being able to, not sure how to approach and follow up when they don't show a lot of interest. Not letting others get me down from Sarah. Losing motivation because of lack of results when I do put a lot into it. Who said that one? Becky. All right. All good answers. If you have other ideas, feel free to throw them out there. Um, not sure what to post and email as a new ambassador. Perfect. There's plenty of training. We can definitely help you with that, Kathy. So, all right. So I'm going to move on. But like I said, if you guys have other ideas that pop in your mind, um, you know, feel free if you, if you want to, to continue to comment um, and add them. It's a good list so far. But summarizing it all up, and Beth actually touched on it already, it was something that we heard at convention from Carrie Wilkerson. And basically, she just laid it out. It was kind of a tough love thing. And she's like, I'm going to get real with you guys. Gloves are coming off. Um, I, she, I actually said something similar to it when I went to the senior Ruby and above uh, meeting before the actual first session of general or – first general session of convention kicked off. Um, and it was basically the number one thing that's holding back, holding us back in our business, like Beth said, first of all, is ourselves. But more specifically, it's our excuses, um, plain and simple. And the way she, uh, she basically explained it um, was that excuses are lies that you tell that nobody believes but you. Um, and she talked about it in that first in that first session, and she also talked about it in the general session as well, that 
excuse is, is something that's very widespread. I mean, everybody's going to have a quote unquote excuse as to what's holding back their business. It may be some of the things that were mentioned, time management. Okay. I don't have enough time. It may be, um, you know, well, I'm too busy with my kids. It may be my spouse isn't supportive. It may be that I don't know enough people. I don't have enough money. I don't have, um, you know, you know, my, my network doesn't have enough money. My friends don't have any money. Um, you know, she's like, basically it, it, it could be a variety of things. It can be one thing. It can be a hundred things. But the fact of the matter is that the excuses are lies that we're telling ourselves because other people that are more successful than us have the same excuses or reasons and yet they've found a way to be successful. And that's kind of how she laid it out. And the first thing in that session that she talked about um, was she talked about leadership. She's like, and you're leading a team. And she said, and a lot of times, you know, as you start to grow a larger and larger team, she said the thing that you um, typically run into and a lot of times it, it resort, or reverts back to that time management um, topic is she said that people struggle to find the quote unquote perfect work life balance. And she said, and, and I was basically like her slide as it said, perfect work life balance, dot, 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 and other fairy tales. Cause she said, the fact of the matter is there is no perfect work life balance and everybody's is going to be different. So for you, the work life balance may be different than it is going to be for me. And so you can't even go into it and say, well, I'm struggling with, you know, how to find that perfect work life balance and ask somebody to help you um, to figure that out because their situation is going to be different from yours anyway. So even anything that they could advise you on may or may not actually kind of gel with your lifestyle. Um, the fact of the matter is, and she's, she laid this out as if you want to be truly hugely successful within this company, um, or in life in general, there's no such thing as a perfect balance because you have to go at it hard and you have to put your all into it. And that means that things are going to suffer and there's going to be sacrifices along the way. Um, and she said, it's just basically that simple. She's like, if you do not sacrifice something, then you are never going to get where you want to be. And I know we've had that conversation before with the basics of, you know, giving up TV time or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and that's great. That's, that's obviously a sacrifice if that's what you're used to doing. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is again, it's going to go way beyond that. Um, I know some people on our team actually at the end of May and beginning of June kind of started messaging us saying, all right, I've got big goals. I, you know, they're going for a rank advancement this month. They're going for a rank advancement you know, by July 31st or by the end of summer or whatever it is. Um, and that was my, I mean, coming off of convention and having heard it from Kerry, having heard it from Les Brown, having heard it in my, you know, the Emerald breakout um, session training as well. Um, everybody has that same message. If you really want to achieve more success and you really want to hit those higher ranks, um, then you have to take a step back and really evaluate things and say, what am I willing to put into this that I'm currently not doing in order to reach it? Because that's the biggest thing that I think a lot of us struggle with. And I know Kathy and I struggled with it as well. Um, a year ago when we pushed for Emerald that month, we still talk about it, that that was the hardest that we have ever pushed in our business, um, was that month. And even the kind of the month leading up to it, but definitely that month. I mean, it was like an eat, sleep, drink. That, that thought is just that we're going for a goal and we've got to put everything that we have into it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And we made it because we have an amazing team that helped us get there. But at the same time, if we ever would have taken our foot off the gas at any point during that month, we didn't make it by a lot. So we probably would have stalled out a little bit and we would have fallen just short. Um, and again, that's kind of what it takes. So. I have to ask you a question. Is okay. this the same Carrie Wilkerson talk I heard, or did she speak in the senior room being above she me? She spoke in the senior room being above Okay, me. so I haven't heard this talk. That's why I was like, this is totally not the same things I got out of her talk. <laughs> yeah. So that's what she started with. I thought with. we were just interpreting um, <laughs> Like she said, balance is going to be different from everybody. But she said the biggest thing is that when you're working, quote unquote working, you need to be working. And it's that simple. Um, reading out, we have some awesome new products and everybody's super excited about it. Learning more about your new products is not working. 
that's that's learning but it's not actually working working is income producing activities which is means you're posting on facebook you're friending new people you're reaching out to those people um you know anything that's income producing following activities follow up those are all going to be great i know a couple of people talked about you know like kathy mentioned not sure what to post um as a new ambassador melissa i think said something about um you know people not responding to her so obviously you don't have control over everything um, in those kind of situations but that's what's actually going to move your business learning new um, information about the products and learning the ingredients and that kind of thing is great and if you ever go on jeopardy that'll be awesome but the fact of the matter is there are several jewels that have made it to the highest rank in this company that still to this day do not have all the details about the products um, and if you ask them even about some of the products and the main ingredients in them, they actually would not be able to tell you everything about it without going back and looking it up. And that's okay. Um, because, and Kathy and I are totally like that as well. We said that from the beginning, Kathy's the product guru and the nerd side of it. And I'm more the business side of things. Um, that's what really attracts me to, you know, to, to the business in general and really trying to help people is like, that's what, that's what drives me. Um, and Kathy loves the ins and outs of it. So when we first did opportunity meetings, um, that was my feedback for her is that you need to scale down the product nerd side of things because not everybody's going to be in it. They just want to know that the products work and that they're amazing. And you can explain to them more in detail one-on-one -on -one why they work and what the ingredients I would are. go over it for like 25 minutes, like every ingredient and every product. That's what he's talking about. Like, yeah, we would spend probably more time on the product ingredients than we did on like testimonials. Testimonials or, yeah. and what could this business potentially do for you and your family. So is this gonna mess up your train of thought if I share one thing No, this? go ahead. Just this was a real eye-opener to me when Ame Darling came to Boise and did an ambassador training. Ame is obviously a master nutritionist. And for those of you who know, don't know, master nutritionist and a holistic health coach, she really, really knows her stuff. So guess what? She's just like me. She's a total product nerd. She loves to research the crap out of everything. And she said it, it was finally like this big aha moment when she realized, yes, there's a certain amount of investment just knowing what the products are and basically what they do, which is a good investment in your business, but it's not income producing activity. And she basically said, I realized all the research isn't paying my bills. She also realized it wasn't duplicatable. So I'll tell you, even with these brand new products, guess how much research I have done on them in the last couple of days? Zero, because I realized my time was better spent reaching out to people. Plexus has given us amazing new tools that are duplicatable. So guess what? I don't need to know every single thing about the X Factor Plus. I had a friend ask me about it and she's like, well, what are the ingredients? What in it makes it do this? I said, you know what? I'm gonna send you the product information sheet that's in our back office. I haven't even read it yet. I sent it to her. She was super impressed. She sat there with a magnifying glass and compared products and was super impressed with what that brochure had to say. So Plexus is providing a lot of that for us. Now with the new Plexus Slim, I just sent everybody to PlexusSlim.com. I have not researched all the ingredients. It's been out for over a month because my time is better used reaching out, following up and make, making new contacts. Awesome. And very true. Um, and again, we've had that conversation before. I know we've done trainings similarly um, on that topic as well, but basically told people not everybody's gonna wanna know all the ingredients and that's great um, because we don't need to know all the ingredients for that reason. So the good part about it is because you don't have to know everything. Um, if someone asks, we have resources and tools available for us and you can say, you know what, I'm actually not sure. I've never had that question before. Let me look that up for you and get back to you. Totally okay. If someone freaks out because you have to put them on hold for just a second while you look something up, it wasn't gonna usually end well anyways. Um, so make sure that, um, like I said, you're not spending all your time trying to understand every single possible in and out of um, what the products can, and, um, can do and will do and every ingredient and why it works um, because the majority of people don't care that much. And if they do, they're gonna let you know about it and you're gonna have multiple conversations back and forth um, about that topic anyway. So. Um, the other thing that Carrie talked about is if your quote unquote business. So let me stop for just a second. We talk a lot about gut health. And I think that was why she phrased it this way, but she talked a lot about your guts as well. But her guts um, reference was that if your business cannot pay for your guts, which is your gas utilities, transportation and shelter, then it's still a hobby. 
And again, mm -hmm. if you want to get from the hobby to the business, then that requires work, just like any other business. Um, you're going to have to put in the time and effort to actually work your business and work it smart. Um, then just continue to kind of dabble in it and stick your toe in it when it's convenient for you and from time to time, or it's never going to work for your guts. And ultimately, I think at least starting out, that's what a lot of people look at wanting to be able to replace um, or pay for from their income standpoint from Plexus is that it's paying for those necessities like your gas and utilities and your transportation and your shelter. Um, and that's what really drives and motivates people. And that's what people want to be able to cover um, to help them to really feel like they're, they're being successful. You know, a lot of times, like even us, we started out just by wanting to um, offset the cost of our products, not even pay for our whole products. We didn't even think that would be possible because we knew after two years with Kathy's other business, we, we knew that it may not be possible to pay for all the products, but we're like, even if it was half, that would be amazing. Um, and then once we were able to do that in our first month, we're like, okay, well, hold on, let's take a step back and reevaluate things. And then that's what it became. Well, it, it would be amazing if we could pay for our mortgage and our gas for our vehicles and, you know, our utilities. But again, that's, that's a ways off. Um, and then as it continues to grow, like it continues to evolve and change. So again, you know, but honestly, when we look at it, it's like, we didn't come into it thinking it was going to be a hobby. We came into it purposeful about our business and how we we're going to work it. And that's why we're yielding business results. When you say they'll work it hard, that it takes work, hard work. Are you talking about 40 hours a week of hard work? No, definitely not 40 hours a week. In fact, it was funny when I, I was telling somebody at convention last week um, that when I went to the jewel training in November, they said like, if you get to diamond and you're working your business 40 to 60 hours a week, because you have this huge, ridiculous team and you're trying to support everybody, you're doing it wrong. Like your business should not take you 40 hours a week to work and what kind of livelihood, you know, and, and what, what kind of dream are we trying to sell at that point? If we're like, Oh my gosh, you should work Plexus. It's so amazing. You have time freedom. Like, and then you're actually working more than you did at corporate America. You're like, you're, you're not selling a dream to anybody. So they're like, you're actually doing it wrong. She said, if you're very focused and intentional with your efforts, with your reach outs, with your follow ups, you know, with your Facebook posting, those kind of things, um, it's like, it, it's not going to take you that long. And, um, one of the things that, and, and I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but I had a, the Emerald training as well. And, um, Emily Gibson, who just went diamond, um, was basically telling the group that she sets aside time, um, three different times a day for 10 to 15 minutes at a time to go through and answer any messages that she's been sent. Um, and she'll sit down and she'll work through those messages really quickly. And then she moves on to something else. And, um, she said, if you do it correctly, that's all the time that you need. And we have so many people who are like, Oh my gosh, I'm working my business all the time. Cause I'm just answering questions all the time and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, that's, that's not working your business to the fullest potential. That's not income producing typically, unless you're actually talking with, you know, a potential customer or somebody that's interested in signing up as an ambassador or, or whatever, or a current customer, you're troubleshooting, then yes. Okay. That, that is good. Um, but what a lot of people talk about is, Oh, well, and Kathy and I do this too. I was like, Oh, well, I have 14 messages from teammates this morning and I sit down and I answer all those first before I do anything. And that doesn't drive my business. I mean, it may help support my team a little bit, but it doesn't actually drive my personal business. It doesn't help me with my, okay. my those are steaks. So. so are we wanting to grill them tomorrow or do you just want to bake them? Oops. All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that she talked about, she made a trapeze reference and she was talking about the net and she said, you, you need to know that your net is there. Obviously as you're training and everything else, you need to know that there's, there is a safety net, she said, but your net is actually false security. Um, and I love, I, was, I told like three different people, the, the, the um, that kind of story. The, the dark Knight rises reference. If you guys haven't seen that movie awesome scene in there where well i don't want to ruin it i'll post it i'll just post it no you should Later. tell it then no it's gonna take too much time it's so good okay okay i'll tell you if you haven't seen the movie okay he's stuck in like a prison that's like in a pit and there's no way out except they try to climb the wall and they always tie a rope around themselves as they're climbing the, i mean it's got to be like a 50 60 foot wall probably like the guards let them if they can climb out they're right. free and so he's trying to climb this wall and he makes multiple attempts and um, that his, his little 
neighbor cellmate basically tells him he's an older guy who's blind and he, he tells him um, Batman says that he doesn't fear death. Um, and so the old guy later on tells him you don't fear death and you feel like, and you think this makes you strong, but it actually makes you weak. And he's, so he's asking why it makes him weak. And he said, because how can you possibly jump higher, um, you know, go longer, whatever, um, if you don't have that basic necessity, which is the fear of death and survival. Um, and so then he said, so, you know, in order to correct that, you need to let fear find you again. And so he asked him how, and he says, so you make the climb without the rope. So he does, he makes this like 50, 60 foot climb and they have to jump from one ledge to the other. And that's, and his first attempt, that's where he misses and falls short. And so then fear finds him again and all of a sudden he can make the jump and everything else. That's, that's a synopsis. When he takes I'll the post it because it's amazing. Then he can jump far. Yeah. Cause he can jump. So in that same kind of mindset, that's basically what she said. She said, we talk about smart goals all the time and you need to make a smart goal. Um, and she said, but you need to make sure that that false security of that safety net is no longer there when you make your goal. So she said, so for example, if you, um, if you're afraid to quit your job, that means you're too dependent upon that net. Um, your job is your net, which really struck home to me since I'm quitting my job at the end. Well, I'm not quitting. My job is ending at the end of the month and then we're going places full time. And you're choosing not to look for That's right. Job. Um, but she said like, you know, for, for an example of a goal, she said in 90 days, she's like, this is what you write down. This is what you tell yourself in 90 days, my income will be blank and I will submit my resignation. Like that's your smart goal. And she said, and that's what you're working toward. And that's what you tell yourself every single day when you're working toward your goals. Um, she said, because again, if that's what, you know, if that's your crutch, if that's your safety net, then that's one of the things or the excuses that's actually going to be holding your back. Um, she said, as far as stresses in your life, they're always there. They never change. So you can say, oh, I'm so busy with my kids. Well, guess what? Your kids are always going to be there oh, my spouse is always on the road. Well, guess what? Your spouse is always going to be working or always going to be on the road unless you retire them and, or they get a different job or whatever. So um, whatever the, the excuse really is, she's like, there's, there's a way around it. You just have to be willing to find the way around it and then do what you have to do in order to correct that um, area of your life and move forward. So anything you'd like to add before I move on? Okay. Um, so she talked about how what we believe can be dangerous because our belief becomes our truth. So our belief in ourselves, um, we create truths that are false. So again, like I said, I don't know enough people. I'm too shy was the one that she talked about multiple times. Um, we tell ourselves that, oh, well, I'm just a shy person. And so then that just builds on itself. And then ultimately we get to the point where we can't even talk to a stranger, um, which, you know, for most of us, when we were younger, when we were kids, how many of us really did that? I mean, Jordan will talk to anybody if she's in the right mood. And then other times she gets stranger danger. But, um, you know, I know that a lot of times, again, it's, it's an excuse. We told ourselves something along the way or we had an experience and then we started to shut down and then we continue to do it over and over because we're telling ourselves that we're too shy. If you use those positive affirmations and you tell yourself that, you know, you will be outgoing and that you will, you know, talk to people when given the opportunity and those kind of things, you will see those kind of changes start to happen gradually um, to the point where, you know, you may not ever completely get past that, um, but it will definitely be a huge improvement. So our beliefs about others as well are excuses, you know, looking at somebody going, oh, well, yeah, it's because they don't have kids. Oh, it's because they have more time. Oh yeah, because their spouse is totally supportive. Oh yeah, because they have so much money, you know, whatever it is. It's like, they're all excuses. We're comparing others to ourselves and we're using what other people have um, for reasons why we cannot do what we can do. And Beth said it perfectly earlier is that you are in control of your own business. You control your effort, you control your time. Um, Kathy just did a post yesterday about how she's blocked out her time this summer because last summer she got very distracted with running kids and swimming lessons and everything else that her business really suffered because of it. And so she had to be very intentional and very purposeful where how she was going to use her time. Um, so that's another. Okay. Keep going. Oh. So that's another thing that when you look every time you reach over me, then I can't see my notes. I'm sorry. Um, and then the beliefs about opportunity so that somebody will suffer 
um, and criticize, et cetera. Um, you have to be, <laughs> I love this. She said, you have to be out of junior high to join Plexus. So you have to be 18 years old to join Plexus. So why are we letting the junior high mentality and the junior high attitudes affect what we're doing? So anybody, I'm not calling anybody out because I don't remember actually who said it, but I know we heard it way before this call and I promise you we're gonna hear it from somebody moving forward in the future anyway. But anybody that says that they struggle with what people are thinking of them, this is your moment. Take a step in the right direction. Yes, Kathy and I are in that group. That's why I'm saying we're doing this. We're so doing much. this. I'm, I'm really not so much anymore. I did when we first started. <laughs> I totally did. I really care about. What and even and, and, and that's that's not totally true. So about five to six months ago, when Kathy and I really started talking about how when my job ends, we're going to look at doing Plexus full time. And people would ask me, oh, hey, when's your job ending again? I'm like, oh, at the end of June. And they're like, oh, okay, so are you looking for something else yet? Are you kind of finishing that out first? Or, or what are you doing? I'm like, oh, yeah, we're still kind of, you know, trying to decide. You know, we're, you know, we're looking at doing, oh, well, at the time it was yeah, true. I'm like, true. We're looking at doing Plexus and, you know, but, you know, we're not sure if we're going to go all in with that yet or not, blah, 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 blah. And then we get closer and closer and closer. And then we get to that point where we made that decision that this is what we're going to do. And then the first couple of times people asked me, it was still kind of hesitant. It was like, well, yeah, um, you know, because we've been doing Plexus and, you know, like, and I totally like stumbled through it. And then we had like this conversation she and I did. We're like, why are we afraid to tell people? Well, and it was when Helen, Helen and Ame came and Kathy was talking a lot about how like their posturing and how confident they are when they deliver it. And, um, and she's like, oh, why, why do we hold ourselves back like that? She's like, I mean, if we're deciding to do this, this is our decision. Just like if we were going to go buy a car or if we're going to go to a movie that other people may think was stupid, but we really want to see it, we're going to go to the movie anyway. And we're going to say, no, we want to see that yeah. movie. <laughs> so it's like, why are we letting this fear, you know? And so I kind of had that fear of, well, I'm talking to other guys who support their families. You know, they're the primary breadwinners. And I'm sure they're going to be kind of skeptical of this and, and everything else. But part of that is because they don't really truly understand about Plexus. So it is what it is. But that the matter is there are still moments that I've had recently where I have been kind of hesitant or sheepishly. I'm like, well, yeah, and kind of stumble through it. And instead of just saying it matter of factly, like, why do I care? This is our life. This is our decision. If people don't want to support us, that's fine. If people want to encourage us, all the better. But ultimately, if we feel like this is the right decision for us, this is what we're doing. And same thing for you. If you feel like this is the right decision for you, for your health, for your financial situation, both, whatever, then that's the decision that you've made and you just need to go forward with it. Go all in with it. Um, nobody's opinion of you, and I'm jumping ahead again, dang it. Les Brown, if you guys haven't been watching that video that I posted on the team page that we've been challenged to watch, it's amazing. And he basically says that, like, people's opinion of you don't, doesn't make it true, okay? Like, your opinion of yourself and your beliefs is what makes your, your, your life true. Um, so ultimately, again, um, when I was in the Emerald training, um, they, oh, sorry, really quickly. For those at convention, you've already heard the story, but if you don't know who Ronald Wayne is, go Google Ronald Wayne and Apple um, because Kerry Wilkerson went off on that guy. I kind of felt bad for him. I'm glad he wasn't in the room, but Ronald Wayne sold his Apple, his share of Apple, which was like a third, a third. I think, for oh, $800 third of it. in like 19, what was it, 70? Early in the company. Yeah. Eight, something like that because he didn't want to work and he was afraid of what people believed. He sold his share one third of Apple for $800. Granted that was a lot more back then than it is now, but I'm pretty sure if you do the math as to what that one third of a share would have been worth. Um, yeah. It's like billions with a B, a big, huge B. Um, so that's what he did. He made that mistake. And so she encouraged us not to fall on his, follow his example she's like because some of you are doing the exact same thing right now the exact same thing you're holding yourself back because you're afraid of what other people might think and who honestly cares so 
Um, the other thing that was amazing, like I said, in the Emerald training that I wanted to talk about was Rhonda Shaw. She's a diamond. She's awesome. Um, said so first of all, that you need to be doing your personal income producing activities, your personal IPAs, and that your team will follow that more than anything else. So I'm gonna take a moment and publicly apologize to our team for those moments where I haven't done my IPAs and I haven't talked up how amazing my IPAs were that day or that week. Because again, she's like, you can be the most encouraging, you can post inspirational things, you can talk about successes, but people are going to follow what you're actually doing. So the fact that you guys are on this call is awesome because that means that your team can follow suit and get on these calls because you can talk about how you're on the call. Um, going to events obviously is going to be huge as well, but ultimately make sure that you're doing those IPAs, make sure that you're reaching out, make sure that you're following up, make sure that, you know, um, I can't even remember who said it now, but like two years ago, one of the jewels, um, made a post about on, on one of the pages about how, um, I think it's on, I was on Celeste page about if you have a large team, it should frustrate you. If you're honestly working your business, it should frustrate you. If any of your teammates have a higher PV than you do every month and granted it's going to happen because some people just have amazing success right off the bat or some people have a lot of customers, whatever it is. But she just said, if you have any competitive spirit in your body, that should drive you nuts. First of all, you should be honored that that person is on your team and you should applaud those successes because that's amazing. She said, but it should drive you nuts from a personal business standpoint that anybody ever beats you um, in your PV every month because you should be setting that tone. And if somebody beats you, power to them. That's awesome, but it should push you that much harder the next month knowing that you were just beat so that you don't get beat again. And I honestly can say that I don't typically have that mentality. <clears throat> and now that I just thought of it, that, that's not even in my notes. That just came to me. Just came so to you now I'm, bulb. yeah. So I suck basically what that means. You need so anybody that beat me in PB last month, I'm gunning for you this month. So he really is. Cause um, we, I really am. Um, but again, when you talk about being very pur purposeful and intentional and having goals, Rhonda Shaw shared that there is an Australian ambassador, um, that she met at convention, um, earlier in the week that told her that she had added, not her personally, but her team had added 66 people to their team. Um, and she's a Ruby ambassador or senior gold ambassador. I think she, uh, I think she's a senior gold she's ambassador. Senior gold, last month. Go yeah. And she said that her team added 66 people last week and she's only been in the company for 12 weeks total and that her team added 66 people. And she said, and she does this be, that, um, because every day by 8 PM, if nobody has been added to her team, she will not go to bed until someone is added and she's going to be senior Ruby this month. So again, talking about having goals, talking about having no perfect work life balance, but setting yourself up for success by having very clear goals as to how you're going to work your business and what you want to accomplish. I would say she's the poster child for that. She definitely doesn't have a safety net. Um, she doesn't have a safety net and being 12 weeks in to add 66 ambassadors. Like I don't even think we added 66 ambassadors to our entire team last month. Mm -hmm. And this person is 12 weeks in and she has a team that's added 66 ambassadors. Like that's insane. Um, like I, I was shot everybody, like there was a collective gasp <laughs> when she did that. We're in a room of emeralds with three diamond ambassadors up front. And she said that and everybody's like, what? <laughs> no, I think she, I, I think you misspoke. I don't think you meant 66 cause that's crazy. So, um, anyways, two other things that Rhonda really said that I thought were awesome is one, she said, you can suffer in defeat. You have my permission to suffer in defeat. If you work really hard and you fall short of a goal and you just feel really deflated, you have my permission. She said, you sit around, you eat you at that ice cream, you watch movies with your husband, you do whatever you need to do for 24 hours. Basically you have permission to wallow in self pity for 24 hours and then you get back to it. It's that simple. Um, and then she said, and then on the flip side, when you celebrate amazing successes, you have awesome 
rank advancement, when you have a great month, when you hit a goal that you set for yourself, whatever it is, you celebrate that success for 24 hours and then you get back to it. She said when she went Emerald, she was super excited. Oh, I have this Emerald team now. I have all this momentum. My team's excited, blah, blah, blah. And she said she relished in that fact for two months and her business suffered significantly because she was just like, oh, now that I'm Emerald, I'm going to have this team and it's going to carry me forward. And I'm going to hit Sapphire really quickly and everything else. She's like, it doesn't happen like that. Like you have to continue working or nobody else does. Um, so same kind of thing. If you hit a goal, awesome, live in the moment, celebrate it, go out to dinner and do whatever you want to do. Then the next day you get right back to it and do exactly what you did to help you to hit that goal and go above and beyond. Um, but she said, and then those failures, um, or if you suffer in defeat, look back long enough to learn a lesson. So ask yourself what you could have done differently, what you could have done more efficiently. Um, but ultimately do not manage your team. If you try to manage your team, instead of focusing on your own income producing activities, management will kill your team faster than anything because you no longer focus on your own income producing activities. You're no longer personally growing your business and your team again follows suit and takes a step back and starts to do what you're doing. Even if they don't have a large enough team to do that um, and your team will suffer for it. So, um, and then the other thing that she mentioned was that um, she said, if you've surrounded yourself with negative people with negative thoughts, you have my permission right now to make new friends. Um, she said, if it's your family, you can spend time with them, obviously, but you do not have to surround yourself with them. Um, and that really kind of struck accord with a lot of people in the room and you saw people kind of turning and looking at other people and, and kind of recognizing that they've done it. And again, group of emeralds um, that have still have not learned that lesson. And um, again, going back to our topic of excuses, um, I told Kathy this earlier, saying that you have permission to make new friends helps you twofold. One, if you're surrounding yourself with negative people with negative thoughts, that's the results that you are going to get. They're going to be negative. They're going to hold you back because you're going to be worried um, about what people think or what people are saying or how people are feeling or whatever. Um, so do not surround yourself with those people. They are toxic and it's going to hold you back more than anything because it's going to be another excuse that you don't have a supportive network. The other thing is if you're, you know, one of your excuses might be, well, you know, my, my friends aren't really into health and wellness. Oh, my friends don't have as much money as they, you know, that price is always an obstacle for them. Price is always an obstacle for everybody. The fact of the matter is if you build up enough value, the price doesn't even matter anymore. And again, for us, that was kind of our thing too, is we're looking at ways to offset costs and then ultimately end up saving money because of how much we're spending on soda and eating out and trash. Um, so again, if there's a value there, people will find the money. They always do. Um, but again, if that's one of your excuses that, you know, your friends don't have any money, great. Go make new friends that have money. Then if that's really the excuse that you have. Um, and she said, um, you know, from talking to about her team in general, she said, you know, it, it, it's, it's, and it's difficult. She said, I have really good friends that have joined my team. And she's like, there are moments where I have to um, make the decision to train my level two or level three ambassador over my really good friend who's my level one ambassador, all because they are not the most positive person. And she said, and that's tough because you have friends that you've known for years and that's a really difficult situation and a really difficult conversation in those moments that you may have to have. Um, but ultimately, again, if that's not um, somebody that's going to be uplifting and really encourage and support you and where you feel like your time is best spent, then that's what's needed from a business decision. doesn't mean you can't be friends anymore, but it means, but it means that you have to set very clear expectations for those people as to that's, that's how you're going to work your business. Anything to add? I have one other thing, but it's not necessarily right on that. Go really quickly. Do you have something else for this call? I have one more thing, so go. 
Go ahead. No, I don't remember where I wrote it down. Okay, oh, yeah. you look for it real quick. All I was going to say is just one example of the fact that we lie to ourselves about things, and also it also ties into the safety net thing. When I was really little, I got A's easily in school. School was easy for mm. me, except for math. Um, and early on, I got some pretty low grades on some math things in elementary school, and I started to tell myself, I'm just not a math student. I'm just not good at math. And I told myself that for years. I went to college on a full ride scholarship. I met graduate magna cum laude, and I got a D on a take home open book test in college. Take home, open note, open book test. I got a D minus because I kept telling myself how oh. bad I was in math. I took you just said a D, now it's a D minus. It was a D minus. <laughs> um, so for years I told myself I was not good at math. Well, many, many years later, Right after we had our, right before we had our third child, I got, I took a job at ITT Tech tutoring English. That's what I got hired to do, and very quickly found out that very few people needed tutoring English. Everybody needed tutoring in math, and so my boss told me, "You have to tutor these people in math." And I was not good at math, but I no longer had a safety net. My job depended on me tutoring other people in math, and so you know what? I was really shocked to find that when I took the time to actually really try to understand something, I could understand something well enough to help somebody else who was struggling with it. And I actually became pretty dang good at a lot of math. And um, it totally changed my whole belief. I no longer say I'm not good at math or I'm bad at math. I always just say math is something that's challenging for me to overcome, but I know I can. I know I can learn it when I have to. And so I think sometimes with Plexus, it's like that too, that we just have these these false beliefs. Carrie Wilkerson asked us, what beliefs do I have about myself that are wrong? And I thought about that because I have some beliefs about myself in this business that are really, really wrong. So I'm working on addressing those. I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. What? The, the ABCs? No, just oh. this anymore. I don't think they tend to go into all that right now. Are you going to go through all that? No, I wasn't going to go through all that. But yeah, no, she talked about what, what beliefs you have about yourself that are wrong. And again, I mean, that can be, like I said, she mentioned multiple times shyness. Um, but I love your notes too, but she said, quit turning your road bumps. Um, which are transitions. Which is transitions, a like, death, so moving loss. Houses, yeah, moving houses. Jobs. If you're homeless, since somebody eloquently said that they're homeless, which isn't true because you have a place to live, but your transitions, a death, a loss of some sort, to quit turning those road bumps into stop signs. That doesn't stop your journey. Um, and sure, it's, it's gonna slow you down. Um, it's gonna be a hiccup. It's gonna be an obstacle that you have to overcome. Um, but I always love that quote. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was my, my senior quote. Obstacles are those frightful things that you see when you take your eyes off of your goal. Ooh. Boom, even you at 18. You that? Drop the mic. It was amazing. Yeah, look at that reaction from Tara. So I'll just tell That's you guys right. one of mine real quick because I've been thinking about this all week. What beliefs do I have about myself that are wrong? And one of the biggest ones I had was I put in a ton of time into my work and I don't feel like I'm getting back out of my business right now what I put into it. When I'm just looking at my business, not talking about him being Emerald, me at Senior Gold, okay? So I've been telling myself that for a while now. It frustrates me and it gets me down that I'm not getting where I want to be in a timely manner and that I'm putting all this work in. That's what I keep telling myself. I'm putting all this work in. I put all this time into Plexus. And when I really started thinking about it, I'm like, it made me realize some of the things this week made me perk up and realize I spend a lot of time working my business when I'm not really working my business. I put all this time into Plexus in ways that are ineffective and inefficient. All, everything from spending a lot of time reading and researching, which is fun, and I enjoy that, but it's not building my business, to um, answering every single person's questions, whether they're a sideline, a level seven, somebody not even on our team, somebody that I randomly met at convention, and answering all of their random questions about anything and everything, instead of telling them, hey, you know what, all I did was Google this. Just go Google it, you can find the answer yourself, which would be more empowering to them. <laughs> so there was a lot of things that I realized I was spending time on when I thought I was working that I was not really working. So I do think we, it behooves us to think about this question. Yeah. I have a belief that Kathy's efforts, because she's working so hard, was going to get me to Sapphire, but obviously that's not true. 
Just kidding. Just kidding. No, I am going to reference this now because I actually liked how Carrie Wilkinson said it. So she said, if you recognize an excuse, you need to fix it. And how you fix that was the ABCs. So the A is for arrest. So she said, you arrest it. Those beliefs are not true and they're robbing you of money, peace, blessings, happiness, health, whatever it may be. And she said, and that belief is not serving you. It's stealing from you. And she said, and think about this. Um, she said, she said it, the way she said it was really kind of scary and intimidating, but she said, it's assaulting you. So you think of that word assault, that's not a positive, a positive thing. So she said that those, those negative beliefs and excuses that you're using are actually assaulting you and they're taking away your freedoms. Um, she said, so that's A is to arrest it. B is to betray it. And she said the definition of betray is that you expose it for what it really is. So she said, you call it out for what it really is. And she said, and our friends don't really like it when we call them on it. Um, like I'm too busy. And I've talked, I'm going to use her as an example. I've talked to Christy Jacobson multiple times because she has talked to a potential um, multiple times and She's just like, yeah, she's kind of interested in the business, but um, she's a realtor or, oh, but she's this or she's this. And she's just really busy and she just doesn't have a lot of time. And I'm like, if I hear that from you one more freaking time, I'm like, you have seven children. Your husband has his own practice. You're very involved in your church. Um, if anybody's busy... I'm pretty sure you can claim that title. So unless you're telling me she has eight children and her and her husband, you know, or her owns their own practice and that kind of thing, like I'm pretty sure you can't make that excuse for him. Um, and so I, in, in some ways, I know that we do that. I mean, we look at the person and we say, oh, but well, they have a lot going on right now. Everybody does. Um, and I'm not saying to be insensitive and just tell them to dismiss it because obviously some of those things are easier said than done. Um, and there's some things that you really can't dismiss, but you cannot use it as a crippling excuse um, and throw up a stop sign where it should be a speed bump. Um, so B is betray it and then C is correct it. Um, and she said, you know, again, using that same example, I don't have enough time. You have the same amount of hours in a week as every other person on this planet. Um, so how you use that time, whether you use it efficiently or not is totally your choice. But the fact of the matter is you can't say I don't have time and somebody else has all the time in the world because they have the same amount of time. Maybe it means you have to get up earlier. Maybe it means you have to stay up a little bit later. Maybe it means you have to work during a lunch break. Maybe it means like Kathy that she has to budge her time and put up a sign for the kids so that they know during this block of time, mom is working your plexus business today. So you cannot come and ask me if you can have a friend over, if we can go to the park, if we can go to the swimming, whatever, because the answer will be no. So don't even waste your time. We will do things outside of my plexus time. Um, but you know, if it's a time management thing, I know Kim Reader said this before too, that she actually takes a calendar and blocks it out, color codes her calendar on a daily basis so that she knows when her plexus time is. And again, you have to be true to yourself. Um, don't let things start to fudge and slide into time slots they shouldn't be because then you're going to, I mean, the time management thing basically just runs out the window at that point. Um, and yes, Melissa Tatro, sometimes we do spend a lot of time and do a lot of work and That's have dry work. spells. That's true. But if you stay steady and push the success, we'll catch up with you. Absolutely. We went Emerald last year. Okay. And we were still working it. Granted, I'm going to admit that we pulled a Ronda Shaw and we celebrated that Emerald a little bit longer than we should have longer than 24 hours. We didn't stop working, but we also weren't putting in the same kind of effort because we were exhausted. Let's from say the I was spending month. more time planning the Emerald party yes. than we I was. Our Emerald extravaganza party more than we were working our business, <laughs> but that was fun. And we wanted to reward our team because you guys got us there. So but the fact of the matter is, yes, we celebrated that a little bit longer than we should have. Um, but we got back into it and we still had a dry spell. We thought, oh man, we went Emerald and all of our friends are going to see this and they're going to want to jump in on the business and do and say like, dude, you're going to Hawaii, dude, you can get a Lexus if you want. Like how do, okay, now it's legit. Tell me how to do this. And it was like crickets. We're like, are you kidding me right now? Like, I don't know what else is going to push our business at this point if that's not going to sell it. So um, but it happens, but the last thing that I want to talk about was Les Brown. Les Brown is amazing. If you have not been watching that video, 
watch the video. I post, I, I pinned it on the top of our team page. So it's there for everybody. He challenged us to watch it every day for 90 days to see what happens. Um, that video is awesome. And it's all about belief and it's all about going for your goals, not getting distracted by outside influences, but going for it. Um, if you can't find the pin post, just go to YouTube and look up Les Brown, Georgia Dome, and you'll see it. It's like 35 minutes long. It's amazing. But he talked about, um, over and over and over just the belief and having that belief in yourself and how you have to be hungry. If you have goals, you have to go for it. You have to fight for it, not to get distracted. And I thought it was so amazing. Um, I was talking to Chris McCall about this before the Kelly Clarkson concert. Um, cause we were talking about how amazing Les Brown was and how he had this moment. And for those that were there, you know, um, you saw it too, but he said that his five kids, one day we're kind of all gathered around and kind of like walked in the room and they're like, Hey dad, can we talk to you for a minute? And he was, he was like, it looked like an intervention. Um, and, and when he walked into it, so he's like trying to figure out what he walked into. And he said that his, his grown kids basically just said, Hey, we wanted to thank you for missing out on all those like special events and activities when we were growing up, like, which seemed like a really backhanded comment. Um, but they just said because they basically they saw the value in it now that that work ethic that passion for following through with your dreams and your goals really taught them more than showing up at every single function and Kathy that hit me because we missed Jace's kindergarten graduation um, Friday morning because our flight didn't leave early enough and we actually told them ahead of time, we're like, hey, you can, you can walk with, you, or you can you know, do the graduation ceremony with the afternoon kindergarten, and that way we can be there, or you can do it in the morning with your friends, um, you know, and Nana will be there to video it for us and that kind of thing, and I know Desiree helped out with that as well. <laughs> Thanks, Desiree. Um, and he wanted to do it with his friends. It was more important in that moment for him to do it with his friends, so we're like, okay. but. It, but it hurt because we really wanted to be there. That's kindergarten graduation. Okay. He's not around, but I'm, I'm, we're all adults here. So I'm just going to tell you if you have a kindergartner 10 years from now, first of all, he's probably not even going to remember. Secondly, if he does remember, I'm pretty sure he's not going to care. I'm like, we're going to do plenty of things between now and 10 years from now that that's going to be a moot point. So, um, but that was his whole message. What, and he actually got choked up on stage. And that's what Chris and I were talking about was just like, we're like, that was genuine. Like you can't fake something like that. I mean, he got choked up for at least a good, I don't even know, 30 seconds or like he couldn't even speak and the, uh, the crowd was going nuts. Um, but that was his whole message. Again, like if you're letting those little things like, Oh, well, I'm going to have to miss this. Oh, well, my kids feel neglected. Oh, well, this, that, and the other thing. Your kids do not feel neglected. I promise you, even though Kathy set a schedule and told them that you cannot basically bother me during this time because I have to work my plexus business, I promise you that our kids will not get to the end of summer if she maintains that schedule and say that they felt neglected and that mom didn't do enough to you know, spend time with them this summer because she's budgeted that into her day. You have to be intentional and purposeful with what you're doing and then you can yield the results and almost kind of have that win-win, even though there's no perfect life balance as close as perfect as possible. Um, but if you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants, you don't really have a plan in place and that's where those obstacles typically rear their ugly heads and then we get frustrated when our business isn't growing and we feel like we ignored everybody and we did this, that, and the other thing and yet we're still not to our goal, that's when it really gets frustrating. So. Those are my thoughts, our thoughts, because Kathy chimed in a couple times, but there's a lot more that could be said, but I try to hit the highlights of the three different things, the, the Emerald Training, Les Brown, and Kerry Wilkerson, because they're all amazing. The whole message obviously was belief. That was the theme. Everything stayed very true to that, um, but ultimately, I think a lot of the truth really stemmed from us believing enough in ourselves. Um, and basically just in, in plexus, um, that we can have the success that other people have had, um, that if we want it that enough, that we're absolutely able to go out and get it for ourselves, but we have to be willing to put in the time and effort and we have to be willing to sacrifice, um, some things along the way, ultimately to hit our goal, just like with anything else. Um, 
you know, I just came off coaching our oldest in, in basketball and I kind of told him that same thing because he wanted to be better. And I'm like, well, you know what? When I was a kid, I was out playing basketball almost two hours every day in my driveway. That's how I got better. Yes, I didn't get to play with my friends as much. Yes, I didn't have time to read or draw or play video games or watch TV because I was out playing basketball. But you know what? That's what I was sacrificing in order to hit my goal. And do I regret it? No. Um, and you know what? You sacrifice things um, uh, along the way and you ultimately reach your goal. And I promise you, you're not going to look back and regret it either. So anybody have any thoughts, comments, questions? concerns on any of that, feel free to unmute yourself. Hey, John. Yes. It's Deanna. Hey. Hello. How are you guys? <laughs> How are you? Just to say How are you? Good. Just wanted to say great training. I'm definitely one of those guilty of I'm too busy as an excuse um, because, you know, I do work full time. As yep. well, but I know lots of people have the same schedule I do. Um, wanted to make a point though about um, goals writing, which I do a lot of, um, and just something that I do for myself is I actually write some action steps that I'm going to take towards those goals because I want to delineate a goal from a wish, and um, that's something I had learned in another sales training that um, we can make a goal and it's actually a wish because we haven't concreted any sort of steps to get that goal. Um, and it just kind of sits out there kind of like, Oh, I wish I had this. And um, so that's something that I've actually put in place for um, concreting uh, steps toward a goal. And that's been helpful for me. Excellent. That's awesome. Yeah. And like I said, I'm right there with you working full time having a big plexus team, coaching our boys in basketball. Yeah, I've used the I'm, I'm busy. Serving at church. Yeah, serving at church. I, I've used the I'm Bye busy kids. thing too. But again, it was one of those things where I'm like, I didn't do what Kathy did. I didn't block out my calendar. I'm just like, oh, I'll, I'll just figure out a balance to it. And I never I never really did. So it's, it's one of those things where when I'm purposeful, I schedule my time, then it's a lot easier to accomplish everything that I want to or need to. Um, in a day as opposed to, you know, just kind of going, Oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll see what the, the day has in store. So, um, yeah, that's anybody else, Anybody that was at convention, is there anything different that you took from any of those things? Carrie Wilkerson or Les Brown? Hey, Amy Johnson, even if you're on an iPad or phone, at the very top of the page, you should see in kind of faint gray, it's slightly faded gray writing the words pinned post. And if you click on those words, then it'll pop up the pinned post. Sure. Hypothetically. It does. I can show you on my phone. Maybe it's because you have an iPad. <laughs> see? It says view pinned post. Let's see. Can you see that? Wow. Right there at the very top. Can you see that backwards? I don't know. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. There's like a little pin there that says view pinned post. <laughs> oh, I almost covered that thing. I was trying to point to it. Oh, she sees it now. She's seen the light. <laughs> All right. Anybody, come on. So, so um, this is something that just is recurring. It wasn't really highlighted, but Les Brown shared this three years ago, and then again this time, and then he's been having us watch, you know, or you know, we committed to watching that for ninety days, um, which is basically a lot of the same speech. But something that really popped out to me the last two times that I listened to it is the fact that he says. Um, he, he quotes his friend telling him to be start pre preparing like he doesn't have a job anywhere yet and he tells him to start prepping and I just just reminded that you know it's really important that we have some small little elevator speeches if you want to call them that or just some things that you know you can say that are short and sweet but that kind of 
you know, show your excitement about the comp- about this amazing company and about the awesome products in a natural way. It just comes rolling off your tongue because you've thought about it before and it's not something that, you know, you have to think too long and hard about it or be awkward about. Awesome. awesome. Or have samples with you too, like they talk about, just having a single stick of Slim. And I like the fact that I think you pointed out that like he he first told him when he went to go talk to the guy at the radio station that um, he told him that most people will tell you no seven times before they say yes, before they want to say yes. Truth. Yeah. But guess what? I'm hungry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, but again, you know, obviously we always say there's, there's a balance to it because you can't just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing to get the seven no's really quick and be like, okay, now you have to say yes. I mean, because then people are just going to be annoyed and they're not going to be friends with you anymore. But, um, you know, there, we have multiple people that we've reached out to multiple times, <laughs> Wendy, and um, that may have even tried the slim and said, no, this is crap and it doesn't work. And then several months later, it came back around and signed up as an ambassador and is still going strong. So it, it happens. Um, I know it's frustrating. And like I said, we've definitely had our, our share of frustration. So it's kind of like Carrie said, you know, the stresses never go away. Um, I'll tell you the successes and, and the, <laughs> the, the setbacks never go away either whether you're just starting out and trying to get your business going whether you're an emerald ambassador whether you're a diamond it doesn't matter there's always going to be those stresses there's always going to be those setbacks and frustrations there are going to be those people i mean i know even talking with Roz, she said the same thing like she has really good friends that you know still have not joined her that have asked her multiple times or she's reached out to multiple times and just have never become an ambassador and she's like I don't know what else I need to do <laughs> like I'm a diamond ambassador I'm really successful I'm very transparent with what it looks like I've had amazing success from the health standpoint you know my kids have by using some of the products that kind of thing and yet people still don't do it so um, there's no silver bullet you know that that's really going to help everything all come together perfectly every single time um, and you it, is, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. You decide if, if that's going to deter you from your goal or if you're just going to say, well, no offense, but um, I don't think you're my smartest friend right now. And um, then you're going to move on and talk to somebody else that, you know, really understands what we do and why we're talking about these products. Or just and recognize why we're that and, the timing will be right in their right. life when the timing's right. Right. And Helen said that when she was here for a training, Helen McFadden made a comment about how anytime someone tells her no now that she always just makes a little side comment like, yeah, they'll come around eventually. And she like, smiles and to herself. And that's her, and that's her mentality is, yep, yeah, eventually they'll come around. Now's not the time, but someday, someday they'll come around kind of thing. And she's like, because she's seen it so many times where people find like, okay, fine. Tell me more about it. Okay, fine. I'll do it. You know, and then they don't regret it when they do. So just to clarify, if you're a newer ambassador and you don't know John's humor, <laughs> when he says, right now you're not my smartest friend, he would never say that to somebody. And he's not advocating. Not to their face. And he's not advocating not yeah, being someone's that. friend don't if they decide face. not to do plexus. He has lots of friends who don't do plexus and he still loves them dearly. So that's not what he's saying. And that's not entirely true because there are certain friends like Wendy that I might say that directly to her face. Well, but yeah. That's because we have a tough love relationship, right, Wendy? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> all right any other questions comments hey john yes oh, ma'am sorry, go ahead. oh sorry this is tara i just wanted to add a couple of things that um melissa eckenhurst um mentioned to us in our training when we had our breakout sessions some of the things i really thought that she talked about like get out of your comfort zone run leap or jump to get out of it and she also put what is your reason you are pursuing the business I really liked that because it really makes you sit and think and then when you are down remember your why so go back to your why and figure out why you started this whole process and that really hit home with me and then also um, I highlighted decide today to cling to your why and then say to yourself I believe and I know I can do this so it's just a lot of great positive affirmations. But another thing that I really like she, that she said is don't expect too much too soon. And commitment separates the dreamers from the doers. 
Oh. I really liked that. It's like, I know it's like, bing. Oh that was so great. It's like, man, that just hit me right here. Cause I'm like, I even put asterisk around it. I came home and I highlighted it. Cause it's like, I got to remember this. And then also commit. So you don't close the door to your potential. And so she gave an example of the potential. And I think, um, Les Brown mentioned it too, is the bamboo plant, mm -hmm. how it takes almost five years for it to really um, kick off and grow and then also she pointed out don't quit and gave the reference of the three gold nuggets if you're going to find those three gold nuggets in your backyard or you know they're there are you going to do whatever it takes to dig and find those you may find one right up front but it may take you two or three more months to find the other two keep going so it was just, it was amazing, and persistence pays off. I mean, I could go on and on. They, our session was really good. It was all good. Carrie, Les, all of them. They, it was amazing. It really hit home for me. It really touched my heart. Yeah, I stopped trying to write notes and just started oh, trying to take pictures of the slides in the Emerald Moon because I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was insane. But, like, Emerald I know. Mountain, a couple of the things that she talked about, too, was um, – she, she said she loved the, the quote. She said, um, again, setbacks, okay? Speed bumps, not stop signs. She said her husband had gone to school at University of Utah to become a doctor of physical therapy and didn't really study and went and took his boards and failed by two questions. And she said she, it was like the most deflating, um, like embarrassing, just like uncertain moment of her entire life. And she just said she was petrified like she was like what do we do now like what if he can't you know he already had a job lined up he had to tell the job sorry I can't start because I didn't pass my boards they're worried about that and she said she talked to her grab or and she said that afternoon um she said she was watching Oprah and Will Smith was on it and she said Will Smith shared this quote and she jotted it down on a piece of blue paper and she said I still have the piece of blue paper and um he shared the quote and it said greatness lives on the edge of destruction and so she basically said, every time we feel like we've had this setback um, or we have this challenge that present, presents itself, we don't live in that. And Les Brown says that in his Georgia Dome video. Like if you have a setback, like it, you're not meant to stay there. You're, you're meant to like experience it and then move past it. So don't stop and dwell on it. Um, but she just said she loved that, that greatness lives on the edge of destruction because she says so often, I mean, it, it immediately brought me back to that Batman reference. It's like when you're up against it and you have to, you have to make a choice. Like, are you going to let this just defeat you? Or are you going to survive and you're going to power through it? Um, and when you're in those moments where there is no safety net and you have to put your all into it to overcome whatever obstacle it is, you have so much more power within you. If you just believe in yourself and you actually just put yourself into it, um, you know, that you can accomplish that and, odds are much more than you even had, you know, originally planned in your mind because you know, that it, the, the, um, your, your ability is there. Um, you just have to have the confidence and the belief to be able to pull it off. So, um, but she just, and then the other thing that I loved from that session too, that I hadn't shared yet was, well, first of all, when we talk about being intentional, um, she was talking about again, the, with the messages and she said, get yourself prepared before you start your day. Um, she said, do not wake up and answer messages before you pee. So she said, how many of us like wake up in the morning, grab our phone, we're laying in bed and we really have to go to the bathroom, but we start answering messages or reading Facebook posts or looking at things on the team page or whatever. And then it's an hour later and you really, really, really have to pee now. And then you're miserable because you made yourself that way. Cause you didn't actually start your day off the right way. So again, we've done that and we know that in those moments, that's when we feel like okay. we're working all the time. And really, we actually didn't do a whole lot of work in that one hour. Um, and we made ourselves miserable because we didn't set our priorities straight. So, but um, going back to, they, they did a quick panel thing at the end and, and Rhonda Shaw got the first question and she, and they asked her, what did she, what did you have to sacrifice and for how long to get where you are? And she flat out said, I had to sacrifice a lot. She's like, why would I stop when I am young, healthy, and capable? She's like, what would that teach my kids, my friends, my team, et cetera, if I just stop? Um, and so she said they had a shareholders meeting. They decided that they wouldn't do any activities um, on her quest for Emerald. And so she said, so my kids were not in anything. They were in no extracurricular activities. They were in no sports. They were in nothing. 
because mom needed her time to focus on her business and everybody was on board with that because they also discussed during that shareholders meeting is what life would look like on the back end of it. She said, so now my kids obviously are in all sorts of activities and sports and everything else and they love it and we love to go to their performances and their games and everything else but that was part of our plan was that we were going to sacrifice these things in the short term so that we can accomplish what we wanted to um, in the long term and she said that she even had to sacrifice some of her relationships with the people that didn't want to go the distance with her or those people that she mentioned earlier that had those negative attitudes um, and she said and it's it's difficult um, but she said, and to be completely honest with you, sometimes it's best if we do distance ourselves from those people, regardless of how long we've had the friendship. It's not saying you can't be friends. Um, but she just said it's part of a growth plan with her family, um, was that they can sacrifice for a better life later on. They had the bigger picture and the bigger vision in mind. Um, she said, and I'm not telling you that you have to sacrifice all the important things, obviously. She said, but just remember that there are rewards later on if you sacrifice the time, you know, now and, and up front and everything. So um, I just thought it was awesome. It's always fun for me to get somebody else's perspective that, you know, is further along in this business as well, just to see. But um, she, I guess she came, I don't know if she came up with a quote or if she borrowed it, but when she was talking about separating yourself from the drama and the negativity, and she just said, I always just tell my family, I tell my team, it's not my circus, they're not my monkeys. Um, and she said, and that's just kind of my motto. And she's like, when drama comes up, she's just like, nope, I don't, I don't even want to hear it. And Amy Paul made a comment about that. But she said, with, you know, when we've had back office issues in the past, which for those that were not at convention, if you have not already heard, there is a brand new website coming that Plexus has built itself. They're not relying on somebody else, our own IT. What is he? C C I what is he? I didn't catch his time. CIO, is that right? Is that what they're called? Chief Information Officer, right? CIO? Yeah. So our our own CIO, Mike, is basically headed up this whole thing, putting us on the map with what he said everybody else. He's like, it it would be three years before they'd even be able to come up with the things that they're gonna have on this website. So it's gonna be legit. They're hoping to roll it out later this summer because they are going through extensively making sure that we're not going to have issues that we've had with info tracks. Um, but uh, Amy Paul made, made a comment about just, you know, that, that kind of stuff and drama and everything else. And she's like, I have zero drama on my team because I don't stand for it. And she said, when we've had back office issues and everything else, I never hear about it because people know that I'm not going to listen to it. And she said, and a lot of times, People have messaged her about other things with just pure negativity. There's no solutions. It's just wanting to vent and whine and moan about whatever. And she said, and most of the time she just ignores it. She doesn't even like acknowledge it and be like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, she's like, she'll just delete the message and move on because she's just like, that's no way to live either. When you're talking about goals, that's going to weigh you down and it's going to weigh that person down as well. The more that you feed into it, she's like, so I just move on and so like obviously it served her well because her and her husband are both diamond ambassadors now. So crazy. crazy. All right. Living in a bus. Talk about homeless. Living, living in a bus. In a oh bus. yes. Seven kids. And Carrie Wilkerson did that. Yeah. They've been touring the country, homeschooling seven kids on a bus. So if you're not doing that, you're not busy. Cause that's, I don't, I don't even know. Like speaking of like not doing anything before you pee, like I'm sure she had plenty of time to do that before she peed because there are eight other people trying to use the bathroom when she woke up in the morning too. So okay. crazy. All right. We'll wrap it up. We're real long. Thanks for your comments, Tara and Deanna and Wendy. Mm -hmm. Um, any last chance? Anybody else? Comments, questions? If not, we're wrapping it up. Five, four. Bye. Two. Whoa, I didn't get to one yet. Bye. All right. Have a great night. Thanks, guys, for being on here. We will get this uploaded and post it as well. So if you had teammates that couldn't make it on the call, they can go back and watch it. And feel like it would be beneficial for them. All right. Have a good night.